Demon Slayer is not an anime. It's a piece of art. Need more convincing? Here's 10 reasons it's a must-watch series, even though most of us have probably already seen it. Since its debut in anime form two years ago, it's fair to say that it has shown to be a breakout hit in the anime world. The manga was always a great selling product. Still, this incredibly successful anime run led to skyrocket in sales. Those of us who are fans of anime and historical periods in medieval Japan will feel happy and comfortable with Demon Slayer's setting. The anime takes place in the early 1900s in Japan. However, Vinland Saga's setting, story, and overall premise pride itself on its grounded realism. And it does it superbly, to its credit. Demon Slayer takes its historical background and gives it a hard, supernatural twist to make things entertaining. Tanjiro and co. are acting in a Japan in which demons lurk and devour humans. This grave threat is the heart of the world's artificial setting. Like with any media, whether it's TV, film, books, etc., a good, well-rounded cast of interesting main characters is essential to driving the story's overall story and plot. Luckily, Demon Slayer, or Kimetsu no Yaiba, has that in spades. It's almost impossible to go through and get to know the main cast of characters and not pick out at least one you love. So, can I get a hand for my Mitsuri fans out there? Or Nezuko? Or, you know what, all of them. All of them are great. First and foremost, you have your likable shonen protagonist, Tanjiro Kamado, who presents the qualities that make the genre work so well. He's dedicated, compassionate, and driven to be more active just for the sake of his sister. Then, indeed, is the rash but impressively strong Inosuke, and the cowardly and secretly powerful Zenitsu. And again, that's just the main heroes. Speaking of the visual scenes of the fight scenes in Demon Slayer, the reason why the fight scenes are so extraordinary lies in the way they are actually choreographed. Everything and everyone involved in each of the fights throughout the anime moves so well, further helped by the sword movements and how they are dramatized by being wraithed in water, fire, electricity, etc. By far, one of the best examples of excellent fight choreography is in the famous fight with Tanjiro and Nezuko against Rui. Once again, this refers to Demon Slayer as a whole, meaning manga, anime, and all of it. Just all of it. The story of the series has excellent world building. It amazingly sets the stage for all of the characters and how they interact with the world around them. It also establishes the rules of the world, the characters occupy, and how said characters interact. Demon Slayer builds the world by originally setting it in the early 20th century Japan. It throws a wrench in the plans and how the characters' world usually run their lives by adding demons as a threat. In turn, this further builds the world by establishing to the audience the Demon Slayer Corp's existence and their own rules, not to mention the guides of how demons must be banished, further adding to how the characters and the universe around them have to work. Surely, slow burns can be done well. Once again, manga and anime like Vinland Saga also prove that slower pacing at the beginning can be just as great. However, Demon Slayer turns the other way and beats things off with a sprint from the beginning. This works to the anime's benefit. You spend the best amount of time between each of the major events throughout the series. One good point to make cornering this specific topic is the amount of time spent throughout the original training arc taking place over two years and the Nadagumo Mountain arc. Neither major arcs felt like they moved on too long and more than fulfilled the story's purpose. Another solid point about Demon Slayer is how the characters develop relationships. This is also a consequence of the world building that the series offers. Still, the relationships formed between the characters, mostly the main cast, definitely deserve their own entry. The most prominent example of this is the relationship built between Tanjiro and his sister Nezuko, of course. They have such a powerful dynamic that is, tragically, only built stronger by the devastation of having their family massacred and Nezuko turn into a demon. Another standout relationship is the one between Tanjiro and his master, Urokodaki. The two bond slowly during their time together in training. 
while Demon Slayer has had 26 episodes to develop its characters, they have indeed established the groundwork for future character growth. Of course, with Tanjiro being the main hero, audiences can expect to find out more about him and continue to see him develop as a person. However, characters like Inosuke and Zenitsu got great potential for improvement and growth. One for sure to get some action is with Rengoku. He is the central figure in the 2020s movie. Look at this idea to be more of an advance for the future. While practically a result of the art and animation, this nevertheless is a standout point. The way the characters are created in the anime, especially since this medium has the profit of having coloring and set animation, is amazingly vivid and makes even side characters stand out and finally make you want to see more of them. The main cast, from Tanjiro and Nezuko to Inosuke and Zenitsu, are all designed to be standout designs. This is especially so with the Hashiras. Each of their designs is memorable and colorful. And just to double back, Mitsuri is still my favorite character. Any franchise or TV series can't hope to have a flourishing run without having a world populated with exciting antagonists, along with some background lore. Star Wars is an excellent example since it has such an expansive world, with the legend behind everything and everyone in it. Granted, Demon Slayer is on a much tinier scale, sadly. It is also important to remark that you don't have to be on a universe-wide scale like Star Wars to succeed. The world spins around the progenitor of the demons. Muzan and his legion of demons, many enigmas surround him, but the lore that is there is enough to reel you into the world of Demon Slayer. Finally, this one could double up for the manga as well as the anime. While the manga is wonderfully illustrated, the art and animation quality of the Demon Slayer anime is genuinely something to behold. The way everything is pictured and animated in the series is exceptionally eye-catching and flows incredibly well. While Demon Slayer in both manga and anime have many strengths going for it, the most substantial aspect present in the anime is definitely in its animation. Every single fight scene, for instance, is an absolute visual spectacle. So, how did you like the video? What do you love from Demon Slayer? And only for fun, who are your most favorite and least favorite characters in Demon Slayer? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload, and you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way. I've been broken obsessed in my otaku ways, and I will see all of you lovely people next time.